student paleontologist delving into microfossils. In this lesson that's featured in the Earth Science Show of Indiana Expeditions, you and your class will go on the world's smallest field trip into microfossils. I have here a bag of fossiliferous soil. That's a fancy word of saying this is some dirt that has fossils in it. The trouble is that this dirt also has rocks and clay and silt in it. So our job in this lesson is to separate the fossils from the soil and dirt and also to find a way to see what kind of animals were alive when this was at the bottom of an Indiana prehistoric ocean. So first off, you might want to take a look at see that some of this at the bottom is very dusty and fine silt. Since this is microfossils, we're interested in the small things, not the big things. Now, you don't need much for this. In fact, uh, this is enough for an entire classroom. Each student only probably needs about this much right here. That's probably enough for a group of one or two students. And as you can see, this gets messy really quick. I'll set this off to the side here, because what we have here is enough of this for the entire group to work on it first. So the first thing I want to show you is when I put this in here, you can actually see that this small aquarium net will filter out some of the bigger pieces and some of the soils and silt that's in here. And now this is just to let kids know that what we're looking for today are very small things, microfossils. We could do this for a long time. I'm going to pick out some of the bigger things, but the best thing to do with this, pick out the big things, and let's let nature and water do some of the work for us. So you get you some water, and you can hold this over here and pour this through here, but you probably won't have a lot of these nets in your classroom. So that's why I like the kind of science I like is everyday science. These are nylon hose. One pair of nylon hose, these are new ones, will take care of your entire class so you don't need to use these nets. So all you have to do is really take you a piece, tie a knot in it, make it a couple inches long, make a nice strong knot. In fact, I went, went ahead and tied knots through all of these right here. And each one of these becomes a nice little micro fossil bag. So what I'm gonna do right here is cut off this one right here with the toe and I got one bag. Tie another knot quickly, cut it right here, and I have another bag. You can see a nice bag that has a knot at the bottom and it also uh, will let you clean through your fossils so that the silt and sand goes through. All right, so here we go. Let's, uh, let's try this one right here. Let's transfer our fossil soil into here. And you can see, you can still start seeing some of this dust coming through here. And then the best thing to do is let's add some water to see if we can get nature to help us with this. And the cool thing about this, this is an opportunity to talk about sediments and silt. So right away, the more I start cleaning this, you see the water gets quite silty, or another word is turbid, or, or really kind of cloudy real quick. And so what you want to make sure you do is you might have some extra water on hand. So each time I do this, it'll get a little more of that clay out of there. And right now as I'm feeling this, I can feel it's parts of it are sticky. In fact, there's a big chunk in there I'm going to reach inside and get, just so you can see what I'm talking about. And I open this up, you can see that there's a big fossil right there. We should look at that later. But what we're trying to do is get all this gray stuff out of here. And it's going to take a while to do this. Kids uh, might get anxious and want to hurry it up. So your job is to continue to do this and continue to do this. And pretty soon, you're going to classify this material down into just the fossils. Now, you don't want to pour this in your sink because this ends up really, really clogging up. And you, you won't have very many friends that are janitors. Let me show you what happens after a few minutes. I've, I started soaking some earlier, and when you do this, you end up getting some that looks just like this right here. And you can see that it's mostly brown and grays, and there's nothing sticking to it. When you're pretty class, uh, sure that there's no more silt coming out of it, the next thing to do is to remove it from the water, lay it out on a paper towel to dry. And this shouldn't take too long in, in your classroom. Give the kids a chance to do the second part of this. So let's just lay this out to dry off of the side. 
And while that's drying, uh, we'll do the second part of this lesson, okay? Once you got these fossils all cleaned, you end up with a pile of very small things that you don't want to lose. So one way you could keep those is by putting them in a vial, a little plastic vial if you have that, or even an envelope. In fact, your entire collection can fit in an envelope. But a better way to do it is to make a microscope slide. Just take a 3 by 5 card, doesn't really matter what size. And this card here, you can make enough slides for six or seven microfossils. Now, this is the easy part, but it's kind of hard. You take this, you fold it in half, cut it like this. By making two cuts, one, two, when I open this up, we have a nice little diamond in there. Now, this tape I want to show you is the cheapest tape you can buy. In fact, it's clear, transparent, not translucent. So I put this piece of tape over here, and now we've made a very cool and inexpensive paper slide. All that's missing, let's bring our microscope, our micro slides back in here. And you can use this slide you've prepared and just push it right down in this, for example, boom, right here like this. And there is a fossil that's been cleaned and dried. Take another piece of tape, put over it, and you have not only a micro fossil from Indiana, but a slide that you can observe and make predictions of it. So it's pretty simple going from fossiliferous soil, cleaning, classifying, making a paper slide, and going on your own field trip in Indiana Expeditions. For more information about this, check out the lessons that are on the web.